Corporations are not people. They don't attend our schools and breathe our air and drink our water. And corporations can't vote in our elections. So how can they be people? But the court in Citizens United ruled that they have the same free speech rights, meaning they can spend as much money as they want to blow your eyes out on television and make you unload your mailbox every day with tons of mail because they've been given that right by the Supreme Court. And it is absolutely corrupting the entire process. The result is that concentrated wealth, now known as the 1%, has been given an even larger megaphone to speak and, and shape what's going on in elections. Just think for a second. In 2000, the corporate tax rate was 27% higher. It's been reduced over that period of time. And the profits in corporations have gone up 60%. Don't you feel sorry for people making more than a million bucks? Now, over two million, since 2000, 12 million Americans have lost their health insurance. Since that time, 12 million Americans have slipped from the middle class into poverty. Now, what kind of America do we live in? What kind of America do we want to live in? What has happened to the concept of the common good? I don't know about you, but I believe that the common good will take us much further than the corporate good. Well, it's good for Citibank, ain't necessarily good for you and me, I can tell you. And what can we do about it? Well, we can wait and hope the Supreme Court will reverse its decision, but that can't be the center of what we think about. In addition to seeking and supporting moderate judicial appointments, we must pursue fresh efforts to blunt the impacts of Citizens United. One possibility is a constitutional amendment that would overturn this rule and take away their personhood, if you will. I co-sponsor that in the United States Congress, and you ought to be talking to every member of Congress you have access to about this issue. It is something that will save this country if we can take it back from the corporations. Now, another passage, another piece of legislation is the Disclose Act, which requires the disclosure of the legal but abusive forms of secret super cap cap super PAC financing. I'm a co-sponsor of that act as well. If you can start a super PAC and people can pour money into it and nobody knows where it came from, what kind of a country do we live in? Who's running this place? Now we're marking the second anniversary of this troubled ruling of wash and un un advertising that is unattributed, you won't be able to figure out. You're seeing it in South Carolina as a start, but you wait till they get to Super Tuesday, about a month from now, you're going to be unbelievably bathed in advertising and you'll have no idea who paid for it and is it the truth? And unfortunately, unfortunately in America, 1% of the people do more than simply vote. You are a very unusual group because you're out here demonstrating and talking I, I was told this would be a bunch of hippies but I look <laughs> I look at this bunch out here I know half of them and some of them are older than me so I know this isn't just a bunch of kids in the street who don't have anything else to do there's a lot of people here who know what this society is about have participated in about it in about in it and this is going to change this election if we get together and work. Last year in Washington State, for the first time, you'll have to navigate super PACs. And the only antidote to that is public financing. And I... Just think about this for a second. I'm running for Congress. I'll probably get about 150,000 votes. If every one of those people gave me $10, That'd be a million and a half dollars. Way more than I need to win. But the fact is that if you were to give $10 or 15 or whatever to the candidates you care about, pick them out and give them that kind of money. 
Some people say, well, $10 doesn't mean anything. It's not, it's nothing. When you add it up to 150,000 contributions of 10 bucks, it's a lot of money and a lot, you can have the controlling interest in an awful lot of Congress people and state legislators and governors and attorneys general if you take the time to organize that kind of public financing. Now, I pledged my life to fighting for the common good. I can't see any other reason to be in public office except to push for what affects the people on the bottom. The people up there in that building on the top floor, we don't have to worry much about them. They'll probably be able to take care of themselves. I don't think Mitt Romney is going to miss a meal if we don't have it. Uh, we tax somebody above uh, 250000 or if we lift the cap on Social Security. If we lift the cap on Social Security, the whole thing would be financed for the future. Why should people like Mitt Romney have a holiday on his Social Security after he gives uh, tax? Well, he doesn't even pay any because he's living on unearned income. That's what investment income is, unearned. Earned income is what you get in your paycheck, and you pay Social Security, you pay Medicare on it, but he doesn't. So the fact is that we're going to get a president who is, or, or we're going to have, candidate opposing our president, and we have to do everything we can in this election to make sure that we re-elect Barack Obama, but we also change the political process. we got to take the money out of the process. You can't let only rich people control this country. It will never be fair. The inequality, the social inequality, the economic inequality will only grow if we don't succeed in this election. So I'm here to stand with you, and I want you to work all the way through this campaign. Don't stop until November, whatever it is, 8th, uh, at 8 o'clock. Make sure you get everybody out to vote that you know and make your voice heard in as many places as you can. Thank you. Mic check.